Salvete discipuli, welcome to this short video on the vocative case. We haven't really said very much about it because it's actually very easy. There's only one thing that we need to be careful of. The vocative case is used when addressing someone. If you're talking to your friend Julius, you're not going to call him Julius. Julius is his name when he's the subject of the sentence, but the ending will change when you're speaking to him. And we're going to look at that here. The vocative is the same as the nominative in all declensions, in all five declensions, except with proper nouns in the second declension, masculine singular. So it's just a small group that we're going to focus on here. There is one other exception, which I'll mention briefly at the end. So if you have a friend named Marcus, as we do with all of the nouns in the declensions, we're going to change the ending. And if you're speaking directly to Marcus, you're going to call him Marque. That us becomes an e. If you're speaking to your friend Augustus, you're going to change the us to e, and you're going to call him Auguste. If you see a friend and you want to address that person to say, hey friend, or hey buddy, or hey pal, you might say amike. Servus is a slave or a servant. If you want to call that servant or slave, you would say serwe. And if you want to call somebody a good friend, okay, you would go to a, you would be speaking to a bonus amicus and you would say bone amike. So very simply, the us changes to an e, no problem there. If you want to speak to or address somebody named Faustus, you would call him Fauste. Constantinus will be called Constantine. Severus, not to be confused with Servus, the slave, this is Severus, Severus, will be called Severe. Brutus will be called Brute, like et tu Brute. Julius Caesar's dying words to Brutus although he didn't say them in Latin. Drusus will be addressed as Druse. Pretty easy, right? And if you want to address a Trojan, Trojanus, you will just call him Trojane. Hey, Trojan, come here. If you want to speak to a bad boy, a malus puer, you would call him a male puer because male has a vocative case. Puer has no ending, so it stays that way. Magnus Weir is a great man. If you want to speak to him and say, oh, great man, you would say, magne Weir. If you're speaking to a great poet, this is a tricky one because Magnus is second declension. Poeta is first declension, but they're both masculine. This one is going to become Magne poeta. Okay, because remember, in the first declension, the nominative and the vocative are the same. Where it gets a little tricky is when the ending is not us, but ius. So if we have a friend named Julius, which is Julius, of course, that ius is going to become a long i. Yuli. Claudius will become cloudy. It's actually two I's that are pushed together. So we rewrite that as one I with a macron. Tiberius becomes Tiberi. Gaius becomes Gai. And then the word Filius, which is son, is going to become Fili. So if you're speaking to your son, you'd say, oh, son, come here, Fili. Meus amicus, the word meus, which means my, also is irregular. And we're going to say mi amike, my friend. Come here, my friend. The only other exception is for first declension men's names from Greek. This is a very, very small category. So 
Aeneas, Aeneas, is doing something that's in the nominative case, but if we speak to him, we're going to call him Aenea. His father, Anchises, and Chises, as we call him in English, Anchises will become Anchisa. This is a very, very small category. You're not going to see too many of these, but Aeneas is often addressed. And that is it for this uh, little lesson on the vocative. I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. Walete!